Okay, we're gonna make this. It's an audio reactive patch, and as you can see, it reacts to my voice. But it can react to any audio you play in your computer. We are using a beat detector, so it should look pretty cool when you use it with some music. It is using one robe node, and we're not going to use a transform this time. Okay, let's begin. Okay, first we need a renderer and a robe node. I'm pressing Alt 2 again, and then I make a rope, and I connect it to the renderer. Okay, let me make it a bit bigger so we can all see the results. Now, what we're going to do is we make this rope look like a circle using the circular spread. Circular spreads. Connect the output X to the X and the output I to the I. Let us make an IO box value advanced. Double right click, move your mouse away. For the spread count, and the spread count is the same as the resolution. Now, if I make the resolution and the spread count 5, you see this weird shape, and every angle here, every point here in the corner, is one slice of the circular spread. So, if I make the circular spread 100 slices, we got the same shape, but with 100 corner points. And that results in this nice circular shape. Okay, you see the gap over here? We can fix that by setting the closed pin to 1. Now the gap is gone. Okay, let me make another IO box value advanced for the width and the height. You see, if I change this value, I can decide the average size of our circle. This size is going to be the average size. The trick is, if I take output X or output I, and I multiply this output with another value, I can make my circle bigger or smaller. So, I double left click, and I hit Shift 8 to get this multiply symbol, and we're going to use multiple value. I'm going to need two of these, one for output X and one for output I. So I select the node and hit Ctrl D for duplicates, and now I got two. So one goes for the output I, and the other goes for output X. Now next, I need another I.O. box value advanced and connect it to my two multiply nodes. And now if I change this multiply node, you will see once again my circle is getting bigger and smaller. If I make my multiply 1, I will multiply 1 times 1.4, that equals 1.4. So this will be the diameter of my circle. If I make it bigger, my circle goes bigger. If I make this smaller, my circle goes smaller. So it's a combination of this number and this number for the size of my circle. Now I'm multiplying this with one value, but the cool trick is here, I can also attach a spread to it. So if I make a random spread, because I want it random and spiky, and I connect it to here, and I want to multiply this with values that are going from, I don't know, a half to one and a half. So I have to make the input one and the width also one. And now my random spread will output a random number, a random spread, but I know the range is between 0.5 and 1.5. So if I make the spread count 100, get this weird shape. And what happened? We multiplied 100 random values with 100 values for the circular spread. And then we ended up with this. Now, if I want to make a more nicer and repetitive form, I can lower my spread count here. Let's say 5. That looks nice. And then we make the thickness a bit thinner. And here we have a nice repetitive organic shape. The way to change this shape is to change the seed of the random spread. So if I change the seed to something else, you see, every time I change the seed, the shape is changing. Now I can just stand here and, and drag this random seed and change it constantly. But we are using a computer, so let's automate this process. I want this seed number to be created at random. And to do that, I create another node. That node is called 
random value. Now what this node does, it's now enabled, let's disable it. Every time it is enabled, it will output a random value. I enable it, and we got a different value. We can set it to integer, and we need that, because the seeds are also integers. And we can set the scale. Now the scale is set to 1, and that means I only can get a 1 or a 0. But the random seed can be anything. So if I change the scale to something very high, like 9999, and now I connect it to my random seed, and every time I enable my random value, I get a different random seed that creates a different random spread that will produce a different look of this rope node, and that's how it works. Now double right click and make an I.O. box bang. This I.O. box bang will give me a 1 for 1 VVV frame. So if I connect the I output to the enable pin of the random node, and now I bang here with my right mouse, right click, every time I right click I get a different shape. Now you might notice that the shape is changing in an instant. Every time I bang, boom, shape change, boom, shape change. But I want it a bit smoother. Now to do that, I'm going to use a filter. And in this case, I'm going to use a damper. Damper animation. A damper will filter two positions in one second in this case. So everything is more smooth. So if I connect this here. And now I right click to bang. You see the shape changes more smooth. video you saw, I've connected a beat detector to this bang. So every time we got a beat, I got a bang. And that was a trick, how to create this nice shape. And I will show that in the next movie. So let's finish this object off. We're gonna make it yellow. So let's create a color node. HSV color join. Connect it to the color of the rope give it some saturation and let's make it yellowish. Other thing I did was make a spread to the thickness. So I made a circular spread and I connected it to the thickness. Now you see it's very thick because it's going from minus a half to plus a half. You see the center is zero and the width is one. So let's make the center point three and the width 0 0.06. Now you might not see it now, but this looks very interesting. Okay, perhaps we change the factor to, I don't know, 3. And let's change the spread count to 100. And if I now put an LFO, if I now put this LFO to the face pin, the thickness will rotate a bit. First, gonna make a pause button because I'm recording this, and I connect it to my pause pin, and then the output goes to the face. Perhaps make it a bit thicker. If I now unpause this, you will see some nice movement. Pretty cool, huh? And if I now bang here, you see a bit what we are aiming at. Okay, thanks for watching. In the next tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this manual banging be done by a beat detector. It's a bit advanced, but we're just going to copy and paste the help file. So it's going to be advanced, yet very easy. See you in the next movie. Oh, and don't forget to save your work.